aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to another video from yours truly, the Scarander. And I'm still playing Pokemon Sun and Moon, which means that for the time being I really don't have any content coming. But I really want to give you my own few thoughts about Toxapec. And keep in mind, of course, these are my personal opinions. Don't set this channel on fire. I know a lot of people do like Toxapec. And yeah, I'm just saying, as the title says, that it's overrated. It does not mean the Pokemon is bad. So with that said, let's get on with it. What are my thoughts on Toxapec and why do I think it's overrated? Well, it's quite frankly, it's a very, very easy path I'm going to take here. And... First of all, I'm going to say Toxapec is a superb Pokemon. It definitely is a superb Pokemon for a plethora of reasons. It's defensive typing, superb. First poison type with, of course, a proper recovery is great and really, really means something for the meta. And it probably has been one of the few mods that really, really has been able to take on, of course, the more well broken Pokemon such as Formosa. Um, but for a lot of Pokemon that are very, very threatening on its own due to its offensive, insane typing, but this guy has a defensive, insane typing, and uh, of course, defensive capabilities, which means that this Pokemon, of course, with the Lights Regenerator, has been able to have a relevance, and it should definitely have all the kinds of credits due to that alone. Uh, its extreme stats on specific stats have definitely saved the meta from being just a slaughter fest. Having that said, the meta is now starting to developing and it really really starts to showcase which Pokemon can and cannot do what. And Toxapec really looks like to not be able to do all that much outside what it does great, which is definitely probably the best of any Pokemon really. And here is my issues with Toxapec. It's Moopool and it really 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 pains me to say this because if you look at of course, you know, he has a superb defensive typing, so Tentacruel, Quillfish, you no know, resistant to what is that? I do believe eight typings and weak to three. That's that's actually insane. And uh, like I said, the first Pokemon to get proper recovery in this kind of combination of typing and of course regenerator makes this Pokemon a supreme wall. Can deal with a lot of threats naturally. Issue being that it, it basically is what Dust Clubs were in Generation Four. There is. It's super hard to take down, but it really can't do that much against you. Um, if this was introduced in Generation 5, um, Skull would still be kind of relevant because, of course, of the damage output, Skull has been nerfed. That means that you can no longer Skull burn Stall with this kind of Pokemon at all, actually. And in contrast, with not being able to deal with the things it's weak to because its only relevant move here, if you go outside of it, of course, um, move pool that it learns naturally is actually Skull, Sludge Bomb, Venus Shock. Those are the moves it could utilize. It can actually learn Frost Breath, I do believe. But with a special attack that it has, it's not gonna do anything. It's actually barely able to break subs with those stats. And being so slow that it is, it's actually very suitable for actually Taunt, meaning that your own offensive repercussion is gonna be Skull, which stated again won't really do a whole lot now, is it? So its over-reliance on passive damage with the likes of Poison is probably having to go about it, and there really aren't a plethora of moves for it to actually utilize that well either. You'd get an infestation if you want to lock in a Pokemon, but then you have to remember that you are setup fodder, and you really need haste with its Pokemon, because if you don't have haste, then you will become that setup fodder. Hell, I mean, this Pokemon does not even do... 25% on super effective damage against Hippowdon. That's a big deal, consider that Hippowdon is able to do, of course, one third at least, and probably likely is to actually outspeed it due to the speed itself. And of course, it is just super reliant on, of course, its teammates to be able to take on a psychic or electric move, which Sally can come. Tapu Koko and, of course, Tapu Lele really wanted to use this Pokemon without really any big issues. And there is where the issue of this Pokemon is now alone. It really doesn't do well against a Pokemon that does super effective damage on it because it's a super, super passive Mon. And super passive Mons has a tendency to just not be as effective as they should be. Here's the thing, though. It's super relevant when it comes to the high offensive meta that is today because it deals with the Pokemons that are relevant. But once the tier starts to calm down and gets more adjusted, 
this kind of moveset, this kind of limitations in a moveset really will hinder this Pokemon from becoming, well, any better. This is as good as this Pokemon gets, and it will always be as good as it gets. It, this is the only move pool it gets. What I'm trying to say is that this Pokemon only do one thing, and it does that really well, but that's the only thing it will do. We will have Baneful Bunker with Left Doors or Black Sludge, basically, and then we'll have Toxic Spike, Skull, and Haze. And you can optimize for Recorders Recover if you don't want to utilize, of course, your t for move pool, because you really need to have Skull and Toxic Spikes on Baneful Bunker. You really need to have those passive moves, and there is where lies the fault of the Pokemon, because you can't do anything outside of that, which means you are suitable for Taunt, and since you are so slow, there only are so many things you can do. And I do believe this is a super flaw with this Pokemon. It definitely didn't showcase from the beginning. I praised this Pokemon quite a lot for how unique it was. But once, of course, Showdown now has gone on for two weeks and you kind of see how the meta are developing, you do realize that this Pokemon is... <sighs> it is not as good as one wanted it to be. And it starts to show. And um, with that said, I still think it's a very, very good Pokemon. I just think people are praising it a bit too much, consider what it's able to do. And uh, I definitely think it's going to be like Klefki. It's going to be relevant for OU, but its niche is only going to take it so far. I really think things, so things going to backfire on it. And um, people are going to see how predictable this Mon is and be able to adjust themselves likely around it. Because a passive Mon means that you can be passive if it so needs to. You barely gain anything from it because this Pokemon... As a passive Pokemon, cannot be able to, of course, support the team with Healing Wish or anything like that. Uh, you cannot go for Healing Bell, you cannot Wish Pass. You are just a Mon that is able to do status effects on a Pokemon. And trust me, that is not the best way to support a team. And I really think it's started to show more and more. So those are my thoughts, of course, why it's overrated. Like I said, it still is a very good Pokemon. It does... It's job really well. It's probably the best Pokemon when it comes to, of course, defensive responses due to plethora of resistances. But it's very clear that there only are so many things this Pokemon can do, and it's definitely starts to show. Have you guys experienced the same thing? If so, of course, just say that in the comments down below. If you're disagreeing, hell, say that too, because I'm I'm not here to you know hate on the Pokemon because I just I'm starting to feel disappointed that it wasn't much much better than it really was from the beginning, or at least when the meta started. It really shows now that it just isn't able to hold the candle for the things that aren't the hyper-offensive statues. So with that said guys, thank you so, of course so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.